Hello and welcome to the third uh, video of coding the Conway's Game of Life in Ruby. In the last video we kind of created the basic file structure uh, for our game and that file structure looks like this. Okay. And in this video we're going to begin to implement the classes required to, to create the actual game. And um, to kind of get an idea with which classes to begin with, let us look at our amazing sketch here um, and see if we can take it from there. So this sketch, as you remember, represents a grid of cells. And right from that sentence we can uh, kind of figure out the two beginning concepts, um, the two beginning classes that we're going to start with. Uh, as I said, this is a grid of cells, okay? And the two concepts are a grid and a cell. Um, these are two classes that we're going to begin with. Um, we may end up with many more classes and uh, we may uh, conclude uh, down the road that these classes are kind of clumsy to work with and we might change them in the future. Uh, but for now, these seem like a good start. So I will um, start by coding this grid. Uh, this grid I will call uh, a, a world, a gaming world of some sort. So let us go to the to the spec file and let's set the context of a world to um, start coding it. So in context of a world subject should be a world new, a new world object and it should uh, create a new world object and okay subject uh, is a member of a world world class should be true okay uh, I apologize for for like awkwardness uh, it is hard for me to to speak at the same time as code uh, but you know it's it is a special feature of the live coding and it kind of makes the whole ordeal fun. Um, let me just remove this. Um, so let us run our, our spec specs and as you can see we receive immediately a failure, failure error uh, specifying that we have an uninitialized constant world which is pretty much what we expected since we actually didn't initialize that constant. So let us do that. We specify a class called world and let us end it and uh, this um, also doesn't make this uh, spec pass because this, are, um, this spec file doesn't know that it is supposed to be including this uh, basic file of our own. So let us include that basic file in this spec. So uh, the command to do this is require a uh, relative uh, game of life rb. Okay, this is going to include it and make the spec pass, which is awesome for us. Now let us just organize this a, a bit um, more so we don't get confused. That's it. Um, and now, uh, when we th when we uh, think about the world object, the world is defined. The world defines a grid, and grid consists of a columns and rows. So a good idea to 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 expand on the world class is to initialize the world class with the arguments specifying the number of columns and number of rows. So in true TDD fashion, it should uh, respond to proper methods. Okay. Okay, and the subject, which is the world class, should respond to a rows method, and subject should respond to columns method. Okay, which I'm going to call with an aberration called. Okay, so uh, not this. Thank you. I need the other terminal window. I was on the R spec, and we see that it is failing because it's expecting the world class to respond to rows, but it doesn't respond to rows. 
So let us implement that. Uh, we should uh, first um, define the initialize method, uh, which is going to take the two arguments in it called rows and columns. Okay, and try to see if our spec is uh, passing. It isn't because it is a wrong number of arguments, uh, meaning that uh, we have to specify rows and calls in the in the spec file. But we actually aren't going to do that. We are going to provide a default values for them here in the initialize method, and we're going to just create a simple rule of three rows and three columns similar to a kind of a tic-tac-toe game. Okay, and so uh, we still do not uh, uh, make this world respond to rows method and why is that? That is because uh, that attribute isn't accessible. So we have to make an etcher assessor uh, sorry for the typos constantly uh, and uh, this line should make uh, our spec pass and it does pass as you can see but not all the way through it does pass for the rows it doesn't complain about the rows in this latest error it uh, complains about the columns um, not being accessible and that is easily fixable with this adding the calls to the editor accessor and as we can see all our specs are passing which is kinda awesome uh, now we just have to um, assign this to the instance methods uh, this these arguments that we pass in during the initialize method we just have to have to pass them in the instance methods which are the rows and the columns correspond to calls um, okay so that's basically it um, but um, these rows and these columns are just for now numbers uh, abstract numbers in a class called world okay they do not define this grid they're just like a they're just numbers you know and the way we define this two-dimensional grid is with an array within an array and if you do not know what I'm talking about I'm just going to clarify it here within an IRB and I'm going to start off with defining a new array which uh, creates an empty array as you would expect and if you pass some argument in it it creates uh, a new array with four elements within it uh, each of which is a nil okay and uh, I said um, that uh, this grid of cells is going to be created with an array within an array and why, what I meant by that uh, is the following uh, let me just create an array within an array um, and then I will explain what I did in just a second okay okay so this <laughs> hasn't worked why the hell doesn't it work uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Just so this is this is awesome. This is the life. What life coding is all about. So renew. Maybe like this. Uh, okay. So this is the proper. I apologize. Uh, so this is an array with an array w with which our we are going to create the two-dimensional two grid this first array with four uh, elements within it specif uh, defines this original huge array with these four um, elements so this is element number one number two number three and number four okay and we specify that within each of these elements which we defined as this a here within each that element do something and we did something we created a new array uh, with three empty elements and uh, this new array is this array okay it is 
this array with three nil elements. It is this array. And if you can visualize this, you can um, sort of uh, see how the two-dimensional grid can be extracted from this. This first um, small array could represent a one row in this grid of cells. Okay, This second array represents a second row. Okay, This third represents third row etc 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 so this is a uh, basic concept of how to create a two-dimensional array uh, I will stop with this video now because it's taking quite long for me to film it and I have to keep it short um, so we will uh, begin implementing this array in the next video so hold tight and see you in the next video